Welcome to this very special edition of Indianomics, special because I have with me one of my favorite economists and guests. I have with me Dr. Kaushik Basu, former Chief Economic Advisor of the Government of India and uh, Chief Economist at the World Bank too. Uh, Dr. Basu, I can't tell you what a pleasure this is for CNBC TV 18 and for me to host you. But it's a pleasure for me to be talking to you again. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, uh, let me start with one of the things which, you know, you have seen from both sides, uh, the ease of doing business. You were in India uh, ensuring that there is, uh, you know, better uh, atmosphere to do business. And from the World Bank's point of view, as well, you have seen the process. Now, India jumped 30 paces. You know, tell us how real was this achievement? Um, first of all, the doing business the way it is calculated, since I got to see the other side of the actual computation when I moved to the World Bank, it's done very professionally. Okay. But the measure is corrected every now and then, like even GDP uh, calculation, you know that something is not being done right, so you make corrections. Usually the way it is done is you do it completely blind, okay. without knowing which country will be affected how, okay. and you make corrections. Having said that, India has indeed improved not quite as much as appeared straight away in terms of numbers. Part of that is India's own move. Part of that is changing measures of the World Bank. Okay. So the 30 places that India moved, part of that was because India had made improvements. Part of that is because World Bank had changed certain ways of calculations which went in the favor of India. So it's a combination. Okay. Having said that, I even before I went to the World Bank, when I was in the Indian government, I would always stress that this is an indicator worth watching yes. and India should try to do better on that because Indian bureaucratic processes are so, so slow and cumbersome it slows down the economy. So I have to say on that score it is good to see India moving in the correct direction. Okay. Uh, can you tell us what percentage was because of India and what percentage was because the index yeah. itself changed? Um, uh, of the 30, uh, more than half the movement was uh, changes in what the World Bank had done, okay. less than half was because of India's move. So I don't know the exact, I won't, won't put down my word for it because I was not at the World Bank then. Okay. But I do know that India went a substantial of, uh, way in that, but more than half was because of uh, changes in uh, the criteria. Yeah, yeah, we know, we keep changing the Sensex ingredients as well. So yeah. we know a lot of indexes. Uh, yes, excepting again, I uh, want to point out that this is done really uh, just to improve the measure and with no country in mind. At okay. least that's the way the World Bank would do when I was there. Okay. All right. Well, let me come straight away to uh, one measure where India improved, uh, and that was in the enforcement of contract, and that was because we passed the Bankruptcy Act. Now, at that point, I want to bring uh, to our viewers this book that is just going to be released, uh, Dr. Basu's book, uh, The Republic of Beliefs, where he looks at the relation between law and economics. Now, uh, Dr. Basu, this bankruptcy code, which has given us this a uh, big jump in ease of doing business. Do you think it will succeed? Because its previous avatars, the Sarfesi yeah. Act in 2003 and the DRT Act, Debt Recovery Tribunal Act in 1993, didn't meet with much success. Yeah. India has had a bit of a record of trying to do things and not managing. But this is of recent policies. Mm. I believe actually this is one of the best moves that the government of India has done, the bankruptcy code. I don't know the details of it, but from the little bit I've seen, and I feel the intentions are right. One measure, uh, doing business is a variety of measures. One particular measure on which India does atrociously mm -hmm. is how long it takes to close a business. Okay. In India, it's just awful. I mean, to go through the bankruptcy procedures, it's much worse than other countries. And we do know that people are sensible enough. If you know that you can't get out of a business once you've got in, you'll hesitate to go in in the first place. So very important part of the doing business. And I was glad when India took this measure. And I have spoken to some people in, go in government. And the way it was being done was right to sort of ease up, make it easier. Yes, you'll have to take some losses, but have some rules. Who takes how much losses, the borrower, the lender, the equity holder, and have clean rules so that you can exit quick. So I think this is a good move. And the benefits of this will be more in the long run. But we have a capacity to botch things up. So. Mm. There will be fine-tuning, there will be amendments, but we have to keep in mind that India takes too long to allow companies to exit. We have to shorten that. Okay. We, we've seen a couple of years of the Bankruptcy uh, yeah. Acts working. Until now, we have two marquee cases to boast yeah. of, uh, yeah. Bhushan Steel and Electro Steel. 
have been sold off and money has actually checks have been written to banks by the new owners are you uh, i mean are you sufficiently satisfied from your perch yeah. that we will move up further in the ease of doing business because of the bankruptcy i would think so okay. uh, because of this and because there there's space for improvement is huge because we did very badly they're so bad yeah yes i would expect india to uh, move up uh, more on that but one thing lata i should uh, mm -hmm. uh, tell you straight away a country is a thousand different things happening in business uh, um, doing business measures 10 different uh, um, indicators. We must not get into the um, ditch of just gaming the system. Okay, okay. Some countries have done that. You work on exactly the 10 measures that the World Bank is doing, but what you have to do is take it in the spirit that the aim of this is to ease up bureaucratic procedures and measures have been taken on this and I hope that that will be the spirit. No, I was actually, that was going to be my next question. Uh, you know, these measures within India only look at Mumbai and Delhi, whereas business is, uh, ease of doing business is much more than that. So how honest or how indicative yes. is this of actual ease of doing business? It's honest, but the indicative is a question, but let me explain. There are just 11 countries where two cities are used. Oh. For the rest of the uh, world, for smaller countries, it's one city. Yes. Having said that, I will say something in favor of doing business. In doing business, 70% is what is the case du jure okay. or in the oh. law books. Okay. That you can sit in any city and do grilling and find out what's in the law books. The practice mm. of how it actually Deep works out, that you need to collect from many places, that is actually just 30% of the measure. Mm -hmm. There you are losing out just by doing it Bombay, Delhi, mm -hmm. but it's only a part of the measure that is losing out by that. Okay. Fine. Uh, so uh, we can take it as a broad measure, but yeah. uh, uh, we shouldn't be too complicit that's about... Was, that was, was my point. Just don't gain that um, uh, in indicator. India is a big country with many things to do. Okay. But I'm going to revisit, uh, uh, you know, I have not read this book, uh, Republic of Beliefs, again. But I've read about the book, and it, uh, as I said before, measures the connection between law and economics. Yes. Now, one of the things uh, that has changed lately is... Uh, uh, the Prevention of Corruption Act has been amended about a couple of weeks back. And uh, what one of the things it says is that both the bribe giver and the bribe taker will be culpable and uh, uh, can be brought to book. Uh, is uh, India moving in the right uh, uh, pace, right direction? I, I don't think so really on this uh, measure. Uh, my own view was that this is something that I had aired when I was in government. It was never really mm. taken on board is to actually, in cases where the uh, bribe giver mm. is being forced to give a bribe, is being harassed, mm. it's a harassment bribe, there should be no um, punishment. A, a punishment for the bribe giver. Point is, giving the bribe giver seven days mm. or a very short window to come out with, most people will be scared. Yes. If that window goes or if after that I don't manage to prove myself yes. innocent, I'll be doubly guilty because I am guilty. Mm. So it should be asymmetric punishment done very carefully and there are examples in other countries now we know that china has used certain kinds of asymmetric punishments okay. there are scandinavian countries which have done it and i do continue and in this book i do talk at length about what my ideas were if we really want to cut down corru uh, bribery type corruption corruption has many faces the, my book addresses only one aspect okay. of it okay uh, well uh, I, I hope uh, we are able to tweak this law but is there any specific uh, immediate advice uh, that comes to the mind in, uh, so as to tweak this law so that the bribe giver is punished but asymmetrically? Um, yes, uh, um, uh, the, the, according to this law, Prevention of Corruption Act 1988, which is uh, now being amended, mm. uh, the giver and the taker are equally punishable. There are some clauses where the giver is exempt but the clause is not yeah. really used. My point is it should be a very, very explicitly made case, not just a seven-day window. When I'm being asked to pay a bribe for something that I'm legitimately, the government is supposed Post to give food. to me, I should be completely exempt. Okay. And it is not a question of your, we are giving you a short window, stand up and say it boldly, and then if you don't manage to prove, we'll put you in jail. No one's going to stand up. Mm. It should be a much it's clearer not, exemption. And if you do that, the bureaucrat who asks for that bribe will be much more scared yeah. and it will go down, is my belief. Mm -hmm. There is actually by a group of Indian and Australian economists, there are laboratory experiments done with this idea, uh, done in Hyderabad, 
which shows that actually it probably works in laboratory conditions okay. at least. Oh, right. But then that's still very good advice yeah. that, and one hopes that uh, uh, these clauses in the Prevention of Corruption Act will be amended. But, uh, uh, you know, since we're into this uh, behavior and you are the yeah. expert on uh, the issue of the connection between law and economics, uh, do you think uh, the Prevention of Corruption Act has been sufficient, sufficiently amended to make bankers take action? I mean, the previous avatar of the law uh, actually brought all bankers uh, uh, into the realm of being uh, charge sheeted and many of them have been charge sheeted uh, simply because the decision taken 10 years ago on hindsight the law has gone bad and therefore you have caused damage to public money you can be charge sheeted now the law says no you should have benefited by taking that wrong decision you should have disproportionate assets only then you are charge sheeted right. do you think it has been sufficiently corrected yeah. and bankers will start yeah. taking decisions now? Lata, I wish I followed this closely enough. My impression, this is from reading newspapers and people like you, okay. is that this part is a move in the right direction. Okay. And I'm also told that banks are now beginning to provide for their own officers yes. some backup mm -hmm. so that you don't get unfairly caught in this, which is going to actually make you more cautious mm -hmm. and can do harm in the long run, just like we have seen in the case of the bureaucracy. Yes. If you are going to catch people unfairly, one way bureaucrats can handle the problem is not take no, decisions. This covers bureaucrats also. Yeah. This, uh, this covers bureaucrats yeah, that also. That disproportionate assets have to be That's proved. right. Otherwise, you don't take decisions. One way as a bureaucrat you can play safe is just don't take decisions. It slows things down. So correction of that is a worthwhile thing to do. Okay, fine. Well, uh, with that, uh, uh, you know, uh, my questions on uh, now shift to the growth issue. Uh, I was going through your uh, uh, tweets and you have this very interesting graph where you point out that growth in India has broadly been rising, you know, up until 1970s, uh, you know, 61 to 73, we were three and a half percent, the Hindu rate of growth. Right. From 73 to 83, we come to five percent. Uh, from around 85 to 95, we go up to, uh, uh, you know, 6.5 percent uh, to yes. 6 percent. And thereafter, we come to 8.5%, right. 2003 to uh, 2010. Yeah. And then we have come down to, again, 67 or 6.5%. Yeah. Uh, do you think uh, that this is a big fall? After all, the 2003 to 2011 period, we were beneficiaries of global growth. So would you be really unhappy about this come down? Or do you think this is just uh, returning to normalcy? Uh, no, I, I hope not, because the 2003 to 2011, when India was growing close to 8.5%, was really quite a remarkable year. And it's not a short stretch. It's eight years of phenomenal growth. There were little ups and downs. There were years with over 9.5%. One year was bad within that, 2008, when the um, Lehman crisis yes. broke. But it was a very good performance. My own expectation was it would drop a little bit from there, because it was extraordinary performance, but we would be roughly there we would be close to 8%, if not 8.5%. So the drop does disappoint me. The drop from 2011 to now is unfortunate. India need not have dropped down this uh, low. Two, three things are behind it, which we should pay attention to. One is I do believe that the demonetization slowed India's growth down. Hopefully that is behind us. We will pick up now. But also another measure which we economists watch, but somehow it's not popular, savings and investment. The fraction of GDP that is being saved and invested, that has been going down over the last five, six years. The savings rate is just below 30 percent, which is not bad, but India had gone up to 35, 36 percent. We have to pay attention to that. One more reason I worry about the growth dropping is all piecemeal evidence, and we don't ha have hard evidence, is that it's hitting the bottom segment more than the wealthier segment. Uh, there's, uh, informal sector, uh, there's a lot of joblessness. So the growth has come down, but that in itself, I would have expected some uh, drop. It's dropped a bit more than that, and it's hitting the bottom segment more than it should have. Okay, the conversation is definitely getting, uh, is warming up. Uh, we are discussing why India has slowed, and Dr. Basu thinks that while we could have slowed a wee bit from those big uh, bright years of 2003 to 2011, we have slowed more than we should have. Uh, a very interesting turn in the conversation. We have to take a break. We are coming back with more questions on this issue. Why has India slowed? Back in a minute.